How's everybody doing? Welcome to an episode of Madden Daily Drops. Today, we're talking about part two when it comes down to gameplay. I got Clint Oldenburg, one of our game designers here in the studio. And you know what we decided? We're not even bringing out Man of the People uh, to start this out because we have so much to cover that we're just going to jump right into it. Not just that, but, you know, I think uh, there was some feedback uh, that, you know, you guys wanted to hear more information from that deep dive vlog that we did two weeks ago. And Clint's going to go ahead and walk through some of that uh, here shortly. So, again, you know, one of the things that when I was reading that blog, I noticed that there are three kind of creative pillars that the team has had when it really focuses based on the player feedback. And that is to make NFL stars feel like stars. You know, not only that, but the other thing was kind of build unique playbooks and a new NFL strategy, which we'll talk a little bit about that here on stream. And last but not least, also kind of create more immersive moments in the game and a more polished experience. So you guys have been really been working on that. We'll talk a little bit more about that throughout the stream. So, you know, in the blog, there were some there were there were, there was a lot that was there that we could there not cover. Um, yeah. So I would love for you to kind of walk through like maybe five to seven things that we didn't cover uh, in the you know in, in our stream, but was covered in the deep dive blog. But I want you to speak a little more to it if you don't mind. Sure. So uh, the first place we're going to start, we're going to recap the uh, superstar X factors. We want to go there because we covered that a lot last time. We just want to do a quick recap. You can read all about that on the website uh, on the uh, previous blog. But Superstar X Factors, these guys are an elite group of players. They have uh, si uh, superstar abilities. Uh, those are going to be available to make these players feel unique and powerful. They have X Factor abilities you can get when you're in the zone. Those are through in-game objectives. What's the most important thing that I want to pass along here are these things are built through authenticity. And there's been a lot of time and care put into making sure that they are balanced. And they're there to balance gameplay out more by making the star players stand out from everybody else. So that's the main thing I want to review For sure. on that point. And now we can move into the other stuff. So let's get into some of the gameplay improvements that For we sure. did not get a chance to talk about last time. Uh, we want to start, uh, start with pass trajectories. So we did a lot of work at tuning pass trajectories. Uh, what, we w what we really wanted to try to do was get a little bit more lift on the ball. Because our ball has ball physics, that means the ball is going to be a little bit slower. Now, that means the ball is going to be higher, but take a little longer to get there in general. However, what's very important to note from that blog is we want to hear your feedback. Once you get your hands on it, we want to continue to fine tune that to what you guys are seeing out there. So make sure you're giving us your feedback. We can continue to uh, perfect that thing after you guys play it. So pass trajectory is really important. Uh, we want to stay in the passing realm. We want to talk about the new pump fake mechanic. This is something that's going to be really important for you guys to note out there for a couple of reasons. Number one, the medium pass or touch pass mechanic uh, that you're used to the last couple of years being on double tap is now going to be moved back to press and release where it was prior to, I want to say Madden 15, roughly. Uh, double tap is now the pump fake mechanic by default in game, so you can double tap a specific receiver uh, to pump fake to that receiver or even use it as a throw canceling mechanic if you want to change your mind mid throw. You can pull that ball down. What this is going to do is allow you to occasionally get a defender either, either on the defensive line who's rushing to jump up in the air and try to bat a pass down on a pump fake or during a double move route, there will be a very tight and small timing window where you can get that defensive back to bite on the double move and gain okay. a little separation with the pump fake. Uh, what's um, even cooler is a player like uh, Big Ben Roethlisberger has a superstar ability around the pump fake, and his pump fake is going to be a little bit more lethal than everybody, everybody <laughs> else's. So be aware of that. Uh, a nice new gameplay mechanic there. Uh, Next, passing game again, limits on lurking linebackers. We spent a lot of time looking at this area of the game. And what was important feedback that we got from a lot of our community was it was really tough to trust your eyes when you're making reads in the passing game. It was hard to see an open receiver and then get intercepted by a player much shallower than that player on the field than the intended receiver. So the way that we're going to start the year in Madden 20 is linebackers and defensive linemen, when they're dropping into coverage, they're not going to be able to play jumping catches or spectacular catches in the air uh, when they're nowhere near the landing spot. So think of you know 10 yards, 8 yards, 12 yards in front of the intended receiver. You're going to see those players reach up in the air and try to get the catch, but they're going to fail at catching the ball, and it's going to go over their head, and you will get some in-game feedback via our new on-field trainer system. You will get some in-game feedback that says out of reach to let you know that uh, you had a player that was unable to jump for that pass. So that's one of those examples of making the game more balanced. We wanted to open up the passing game a little more and give a little bit more realistic defense towards the passing game. Uh, next on the list, uh, we refra uh, excuse me, refactored uh, QB pressure penalties. Um, we, we again were looking at the balance of the game and 
when looking at the NFL and watching football, you notice that the impact that pressure has on quarterbacks has a very big impact on the outcome of football games and the outcome of each play. And that was something that we felt like we were missing, especially in terms of getting pass rushers up the field towards the quarterback. So now you're going to see a lot of superstar abilities focused on putting more pressure on the, uh, on the quarterbacks, both from an engaged state and a non-engaged state. And you're also going to see quarterbacks who have a really high throw under pressure rating be a lot more valuable because they're going to be able to resist that pressure a lot more frequently than a lower rated player. But pressure is going to have an impact on throwing power and throwing accuracy. And the uh, really nice thing about this system is you're going to be told what's going on on the field with our new in-game feedback. Uh, the passing feedback has been um, added to a lot more polish. In terms of detail, you're going to see a lot more detail about what's going on on the field. You're going to see exactly what happened in that situation when you had pressure, heavy pressure, when you resisted pressure. You're going to know why the pass went where it went uh, relative to the defensive lineman. And then uh, lastly, I want to cover rushed get-ups. Now, that term sounds a little odd, so I want to explain that a little bit. It's uh, animation technology that we were able to work on this year. When a player gets a ball and he's on the ground, uh, oftentimes in the past he would get up slowly like the play was over. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a lot of work to make sure players are aware that the play is still live. They haven't been touched down. They're going to hurry up and get off the field. Important note here is uh, offensive linemen, when they pick up a fumble, they are not going to use rush get-ups, so they're still going to get up slower off the ground. But everybody else on the field will be able to use those get-ups and, and be more aware of the situation in the game. So I think that those are the big beats. There's plenty more in that blog, so make sure you go check that out. Uh, but those are the ones that we really wanted to call out today. Awesome. Well, I know in, in that spirit, you know, talking about fast to fun, you know, and kind of getting players to kind of get more involved in the game. Can you talk a little bit about that, like that immersive experience in game, those immersive moments uh, that they'll see in Madden 20? Sure. So fast to fun uh, quite simply means we want more fun per minute. We want our players playing the game more and watching the game less. With this came a few changes in terms of our presentation. Uh, presentation in post-play and pre-play is going to be a little bit shorter. You're going to notice after the play is going to be cut a little bit shorter unless there's something really cool to show like a celebration. During the play, you are going to notice a streamlined experience from play call to line of scrimmage. This applies to no huddle as well. Uh, what you're going to see is a, um, how do I want to word this? Um, you're going to see a shortened presentation experience. So you're not, you're no longer going to see players getting aligned out of the huddle breaking the huddle and going to the line of scrimmage, you're going to see them immediately at the line of scrimmage. We've standardized all of the time so that both the offense and defense is going to have the exact same amount of time to make adjustments before the play. And then the accelerated clock is always going to take off the amount of time it would have taken the player furthest away from his formation position to get a line. So you're going to see the clock accelerate, whether you have the setting on or off, no matter what, to make up for those times that you otherwise would have been watching them get set at the line. Oh, I know great. that that sounds really dense but hopefully yeah. that makes sense to no, all you guys out there it's great i think a lot of people that come out to ea play will kind of get to see that experience uh what's great about it, i think at the end of the day at first when i started playing it was a little jarring at, at first but the more i played it i started to realize like this is great i'm actually you know i call my play i'm good to go let's you know it kept the game moving which yeah. was a great experience for me overall uh you talked a little bit about the new on-field trainer can you elaborate a little bit about that i mean it's a feedback system but can you give some more information yeah, there's two parts of on-field trainer. So the, the first part is really how we want to onboard ramp and teach our players how to play Madden. That's the true iteration of, of on-field trainer, and that's going to give players dynamic tips on in-game mechanics and how to do certain things in the game. What's really cool about the on-field trainer portion of this is it's dynamic to your habits. So once you've shown mastery in certain skills, it's going to stop showing you those things, and then it's going to show you other more advanced uh, things to learn. And then the second part of that is in-game feedback. It's going to look the same. You're going to see the same iconography in the game and the same type of visuals, but it's giving you feedback about what's happening in the game. So you're going to get your catching feedback, your pass rush feedback via that system rather okay. than um, different buttons and different kinds of text showing up over the screen like we had in Madden 19. Got it. It's more cohesive and it's easier to understand. Um, so that's a, that's a pretty nice improvement for us in terms of getting more information to our players about what's happening on the field. Yeah, um, so are there going to be any updates to the play call screen this year? Yeah, there is going to be a few updates to the play call screen. Great question. Uh, this guy's been playing the game. So we were looking at um, making a more cohesive experience with play call and our X Factor superstar players. So you're going to see some iconogra iconography in the play books telling you 
uh, which superstar players are the featured player on that play let's say a primary receiver Antonio Brown's your primary receiver you're going to be told that you're going to see what his x-factor ability is and uh, that should help steer you towards using the plays if you want to get those players involved and get them the ball that's great stuff. Uh, now, Clint, uh, we're going to go ahead and jump over to the segment with Anthony White. But before yeah. we go, is there anything else you want to share, anything that we missed regarding, you know, uh, Superstar X Factor abilities, zone abilities, anything that's pressing on your mind that you really want to emphasize to the community out there? No, I think we covered everything today. We tried to get it out quickly. I don't want to take too much time away from Anthony. This guy's <laughs> a really great gameplay designer, and he's got news about RPOs to share, which I know that our players are really excited about so let's get them to that now that's great awesome well again clint thank you so much for coming on we're yeah. going to go ahead and get anthony thank you white guys. on stream EA play but again thank you guys for all that feedback in the chat oh trick play which we're going to talk about we're going to talk about <laughs> trick plays they pulled the trick play on me they had me muted thank you so much the Gibbs had one job to do uh, but it's all good so one thing that we wanted to highlight we're seeing a ton of chatter in the chat that you guys are like well we're, can we see some stuff uh, you guys are going to see more stuff at EA Play. We're going to show some things on stream. So, you know, don't, I mean, there was a lot of conversation when we were talking with Clint. We wanted to give you guys some context. We're still going to go ahead and give you some context with Anthony and I here. Uh, but keep in mind at EA Play, we're going to show you some more stuff. There's going to be a survey that's going to give you some information right there of what you may want to see. Uh, you know, stay tuned for that. Man of the People, Z Farls, will come on at the very tail of the stream when he's talking with RG and they'll go ahead and talk about that survey. So, without further ado, I got Anthony. Anthony White here. Anthony, it's great to have you on stream. I'm glad we got to pull you away from all the film. This guy is constant. Him and Swami both, for those people that don't know in the community, are constantly watching film together. It's crazy. Uh, it's great to have you here. Hey, man. Um, introduce yourself, man. Hey, man. It's great to be here. First off, you know, I've watched these streams quite a bit in the past, and, you know, it looked like you guys have a blast, and, you know, just <laughs> watching, you know, the behind the scenes stuff, um, you know, I'm not disappointed. But uh, yeah, uh, for those who don't know, my name is Anthony White. I'm a gameplay designer here uh, at EA. And um, I've been here since uh, 2005 and, you know, in various roles. But I think most people know me primarily as the guy that works on the playbooks and things of that nature. Um, so now we're here today to share a little bit of information about what we're doing for Madden 20 in regards to uh, the RPOs and the playbooks. Good stuff, man. I mean, I'm, I'm excited because, you know, Adub, I'm, I'm going to call you Adub. Adub is extremely passionate when it comes down to playbooks. Uh, he's been very passionate about RPOs. Uh, for those people that are new to stream, you know, can you elaborate a little bit? Like, what is an RPO? Yeah, uh, RPO um, is basically it stands for run pass option. And when you think of RPO, you know, you think of you know the running game, and you know, basically, this is the type of play that gives an offense multiple ways to attack a defense within a singular play. And, you know, and it's a lot of times, you know, it's based on a couple of elements: pre snap. What you see with the defense, with their alignment, you know, you have leverage, you know, you got the box count. But then also, too, in some of the types of the RPOs, which we'll touch on later, the different types that we have in the game, you have a post-snap element where you're reading a particular defender that in the football world we call him the conflict defender. 
We're basing a read on that guy, and he tells us whether or not we're going to pass the ball or throw the ball or run the ball. That's great. You know, you, you mentioned that we're going to talk about, you know, the three types of RPOs that we have. I think we have a graphic right here of in-game that we'll take a look at. We have three types of RPOs. Can you actually talk to these and, and tell me how they work in-game? Yeah, um, you know, the first one, you know, what we term is uh, called peak. And, you know, a peak RPO for us is basically think of second level. Not to get too technical here, but we're essentially we're reading a backside linebacker. And based on the reaction of that backside linebacker, if he were to sit and hold his position, you know, we're looking to hand the ball off and run the ball because essentially we have numbers in the running game. If that player were to come up and play the run, play his run fit or any movement towards the line of scrimmage, well, we're going to try to we're taking a peek at that linebacker and we're going to try to hit a, a route behind in that particular area. What we do with the blocking scheme to make sure that we're sound there, we try to keep the backside tackle on our play locked on the backside DN so that we can sort of uh, isolate that particular player on the uh, play. So that's the uh, 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 one that we really um, like to um, think about in terms of the NFL. That's what most teams tend to run. Got it. Okay. And I know we have a couple of others here as well. We have the read and alert. Can we yeah. walk through those? Yeah, the read RPO. Think old school triple option. That's essentially what it is. You know, for a lot of you out there that are watching the stream, you've probably played our uh, NCAA football game back in the day. And even in Madden now, we have read option, well, read and triple option plays in the game. Well, what the uh, read RPO is, it's all those same elements, except essentially we're replacing the pitch element with the pass. So we have the read where we're reading a first level defensive end where we can give it to the back, or we can keep it with the quarterback. But then we have the uh, pitch element, where we're reading a pitch defender, what we call a pass key guy, where we basically, we can either throw the bubble screen, and in some of these plays we have in the game, uh, we could throw a flanker screen outside. So that's a, a, a version of the uh, RPO that I actually really enjoy that one a lot, because you know you have all kinds of different ways that you can attack a defense. And the other thing I need to point out about the uh, read RPO, you can probably just notice on some of the diagrams that we have an alert away from where the triple option is going. So at any point, free snap leverage, you can throw that route right now. So okay. if the defense is giving you something right now and okay, you don't have to go through the read. I'm just gonna go bam, get the ball out. Okay. And the offensive line in the back, they will still carry out their assignments as if they're going through the run play. Okay. Well, uh, talking about RPOs, uh, how many RPOs are we going to have in game this year, and where can you find these actually in Madden 20? Yeah, um, at the moment right now, we have over well over 200 uh, different types of RPO plays in the game, and uh, you know, and we'll talk about a little later what we plan on doing um, post launch. But we're going to obviously grow that number. The easiest way to find these is when you're at the play call. You can go play call by concept, and you'll go to option, and then under play call by concept option, you'll see RPO peak, RPO alert, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then RPO uh, uh, read. So, and then of course, it's dependent on the playbook that you use. So if you're playing with a team like, let's say the Eagles, Colts, um, the Chiefs, teams like that that are heavy RPO teams, they major in that type of stuff. Watch a lot of films on those teams. They have a lot of RPOs in their playbooks. But if you're looking at a team like the Rams or the Patriots, those teams were based on the uh, you know st stats that we have. They really didn't do a lot of that, but they do have a few in their playbooks. So it's dependent on the playbook that you have, and of course the style of play that you incorporate. Great. Now, I, uh, yeah. So uh, so regarding RPOs, like we talked a little bit about how to do them. Can you talk elaborate a little more on how they are done, kind of in game? Yeah. Uh, so the different types of RPOs that we have in game. You know, we talked about the peaks and the uh, reads. Well, those for most of you will work similar to the current options that we have in the game in terms of the triple options, read options. So the peak RPO, that's basically, you know, think the read option that we have in the game right now where you're reading that backside in and you have to hold A if you want to give the ball to the back. Well, same thing here. You know, you're reading that backside linebacker and based off his reaction, hold A um, to give it to the uh, back. Or, you know, if you don't want to give it to the back, press the icon of the receiver who's running that peak route. So it's sort of like uh, a new school take on the traditional read option, except now 
a lot less riskier for the quarterback. That's why this is the most popular one in the NFL because the quarterback is not a runner here. So it's basically either throw or give. The uh, read RPO is just like the current triple option uh, RPO, except you, know, you can read, you can run with the quarterback, but also you can press the icon of the receiver that's going to pass. Now the alerts. Uh, the alerts, these are run plays. Think of these as run plays with route alerts. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, we go talk to NFL coaches and we got NFL playbooks, you know, routes on, uh, uh, route alerts on run plays. What that essentially does, it gives the offense the ability to attack a defense in multiple ways based on pre-snap leverage and based on the box count. This is a run play. You're not, there's no post-snap read here. This is all pre-snap. If you were to look out there and you were to see based on the hat count, based on the numbers in the box, you have the advantage to run the ball will run the ball. But if for whatever reason you detect that you have an unblockable defender at the point of the tack where the run is going to, now you want to really start looking at that backside um, uh, alert route, which for us, we have a couple types. On a, when we have a single, receive, a single receiver backside from the run, you'll get a smoke screen or you'll get what we call a looky, which is basically a quick slant. If you got a slot receiver on the backside, you get a bubble screen. So those are the things that you have to be, um, um, you know, cognizant of when you run the alerts. Also with the alerts, just like a run play, if you don't do anything, uh, the handoff will automatically happen for you. So it's just like a run play um, that essentially the pass option is your get out of jail card. Yeah. No, and I think one thing that we can talk about, and we can actually put this in the gridiron notes, is talking about some of the downsides yeah. of RPOs. But you touched on something about handoffs. So, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that, and that is about the new handoff yep. technology. Can you, can you walk us through that new handoff technology? Well, yeah, the, the, the thing about the new handoff technology, the, in the old days, to kind of give people an idea how we used to do handoffs, we would give the quarterback and the primary ball carry, or carrier a series of assignments to get them to a singular point, and they intersect, and then a handoff animation would trigger. Okay. That system, it kind of puts some limitations on us in the types of things that we can do. Now with the new system, we basically put multiple characters into the uh, handoff and we assign their roles. So what that has enabled us to do is obviously create new, interesting and unique types of uh, handoffs and plays, you know, because we get a lot of social media um, requests and feedback on, hey, well, I would love to see this play and that play. Well, now this new system opens that door, that gateway, if you will, for us to do those types of things. And we're going to um, get into a few of those here. Okay, yeah, it looks like we have some new handoff animations right here if you want to walk through these. Um, I also want to we'll check and see if we have some ant footage when it comes down to the new handoff tech. Yeah, uh, and these are some of the plays that basically, uh, you know, a lot of our fans have been um, talking about, especially over the last couple of years. You know, anybody who's watched teams like the uh, Los Angeles Rams and the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, you see a lot of uh, what we call jet sweep. And what mm -hmm. that is is take a wide receiver who's out wide He's going in super fast motion. And what you see a lot of times the teams will do, they can either give it to that guy and then fake it to the running back. They fake it to the jet sweep and um, give it to the back or give it to the jet sweep, fake the back, fake the jet sweep and play action. And then, you know, they also have other complement plays off that, which we have a few in the playbooks that we'll show you guys. Yeah. But this technology has actually opened up that door for us to do these type of things. When you look at a team like the uh, LA Rams playbook, for example, Right now, their playbook, all single back, lots of bunch, tight type formations. The first page of their playbook, you're going to see some type of fly sweep, some type of fake uh, jet sweep, fly sweep, PA. So those are the types of things that we're really trying to encapsulate with those uh, uh, teams' playbooks. The same thing with the Chiefs. Like here's a couple examples. This is one here with the uh, that Chiefs are made uh, popular in the first week of the um, NFL season against the Los Angeles Chargers. What you see here, you got, this is a shotgun formation. You see the fast motion coming across and then we can fake it to the back. We got a version here where fast motion comes across and we give it to the back. We got a version of this, fast motion comes to the cross, uh, fast motion comes across and we can do play action. So you get a nice little series of plays or mini scheme as the young ones call it, uh, that you can build off there. This one here, this is a, uh, the jet sweep, Los Angeles Rams, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the Rams and Sean McVay's offense, a very unique offensive system. This is what I'm talking about. You're under center, same thing. You got the fast motion by the outside receiver. You can fake it to the back. And then uh, 
you know, you got all kinds of different elements here. Now, actually, I think this is the reverse out of the bunch here. So what this is out of single back bunch, you got the quick pitch play that everybody's seen in the playbook. Well, now you're faking the pitch, but you're pitching the ball to a receiver going mm -hmm. the other way. So that's a reverse great. there. So that's a cool one of the new plays that we got in the game. Now here's the um, Sean McVay. <laughs> oh, now this, this is, is actually this, this is the Philly special. Yeah, they right pull a trick on me. This is the Philly special here. So the funny thing about this play, there are so many unique elements to this uh, particular um, play, where in terms of you got the quarterback going to the line of scrimmage, tapping the backside of the uh, offensive tackle, then the snap happens. So we didn't want to just put one singular play there. We actually had to think of some special fake plays, if you will, compliment plays that go along with this. So this particular play is something that, you know, we started uh, immediately after the Super Bowl when they ran this against the uh, Patriots, trying to figure out, okay, well, we got to come up with a way to get this in the game. And that's actually led us to the road to experimenting with and prototyping the new uh, animation technology that we talked about. And, uh, you know, you can see the results there. Lots yeah. of cool, new, interesting content that I think fans of the uh, Madden series will really be uh, happy with. Yeah, and I, I know at the end of the day, you'll see just a couple, we're showing you guys just a, a, a few of those plays. Um, mind you, there's over 200 RPOs, right? I mean, oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty extensive. Oh, yeah, we have a pretty extensive list. Crazy. So let's talk about playbook. Okay, yeah. You are the playbook king here in the studio. Yeah. Uh, I see you constantly talking with Swami and uh, other people in the studio. I know when we have people come down into the studio, they just they just want to pick your brain on how playbooks are created and, and the, the whole science behind it. Um, I know we have some unique passing plays you know, in, in these playbooks from Madden 20. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, we have some, we definitely try to uh, make sh uh, a concerted effort, if you will, to sort of update and modernize the passing game in terms of what we're doing with our playbooks. Uh, you know, a lot of that revolves around some more additional option routes, obviously some team specific uh, concepts, things that we tried to get to. Like, for example, everybody, um, well, a lot of people have been asking me about the Arizona Cardinals. You know, Cliff Kingsbury coming in from Texas Tech. Well, people want to know, well, we, we see air raid type offense yes you will see an air raid offense with a lot of those uh, staple plays in there in the uh, Arizona playbook and that's unique to them you know no other team will have that then when you look at the uh, Baltimore Ravens playbook that's another one that I get uh, a lot of questions about on social media yeah you pick up the Baltimore Ravens playbook you'll have like 12 pistol formations loaded with option plays read options speed options different types of passing concepts that they use Shotgun heavy, if you will, lots of stuff that are very unique to the uh, Baltimore Ravens and take advantage of Mar Lamar Jackson, who has special abilities based on being a running quarterback. Uh, then if you take a look at a team like the Rams we touched on earlier, we, you know, with all the under center single back, and trust me, I get a lot of questions <laughs> about the Rams not using high formation, two backs. Trust me, I'm fully aware of it. Last year, the year before, in 2017, they actually did use some of those formations. So that's why it was okay. in that playbook. This year, though, none of that. So it's all out. It's all single back. Yes. Yes. Yeah. A, a, a Dub is listening, and I think that that's a that's a great thing that you know, as you guys are listening, of course, there has to be a way to you know update playbooks. Yeah. Uh, can we talk a little bit about that? And how and it's gonna happen? That's 20? a nice segue into um, what we want to talk about here. We recognize that a lot of teams, you know, they evolve from what they do from year to year. So we based, traditionally we based the playbooks off what they've done the previous year, but now this year we're looking to really up the cadence, if you will, on the number of playbook updates we do post-launch. Last year, there was our first year sort of uh, being able to get this technology up and going, and you know, it was kind of late, and so we didn't get to do as many things as we would sure, like yeah. to do. But this year, you know, we got a, pl a solid plan in place, we believe. Uh, and, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, throughout the year being able to add unique things and playbooks evolve based on what they're doing in real life. So that's one of our really, really big focus goals, you know, to sort of transition a little bit, a little part of the Madden development um, process into that live services or, you that's know, the live uh, services model. That's a, a big initiative. Yeah, that's great. I think at the end of the day, one of the big things we want to do is make sure to kind of stay 
up to date, fluent with kind of what's going out there, and, and make sure that that's reflective in the game. Because one of the big things this year, just like with Superstar X Factor, is bringing a level of authenticity into the game. And again, these things are really based on things that these players can do. Is also bringing that level of authenticity throughout the season um, as we kind of create these moments for our players like you. So Anthony, great stuff. Um, is there anything you, anything else you want to talk about, you know, or highlight before uh, we bring on Man of the People Z Farls and RG, uh, who is a uh, just, I don't know, he's just a light to watch kind of on these competitive streams, so. Um, I mean, you know, just want to let the, the people know, hey, uh, when it comes to like um, authenticity in terms of playbook schemes, uh, things of this nature, trust me, we're uh, looking at it, we're paying attention to it. These guys will tell you, you know, if it was up to me, we'd have two million plays in the game, <laughs> but obviously we can't do that. But uh, yeah, we're definitely taking feedback and we, we're looking at all. We may not respond to everything, but we see it and we try to, uh, you know, get something that's out there that's, representative of the NFL first and foremost and something that uh, hopefully you all will enjoy when you pick up Madden uh, August 2nd. It's great stuff. Well, again, uh, A-Dub, thank you so much for coming out. You so are a natural. You are a pro. I think we're going to do a deep dive with this guy like on a podcast so that uh, maybe we do like a four-hour. I'm just kidding. Maybe we do like a two-hour <laughs> podcast. Anthony has a lot of knowledge when it comes down to playbooks um, and everything like that. I know a lot of people really love digging into that, so we'll make sure to make that happen. Uh, but right now, we're going to go ahead and bring on Z Farls and RG Madden to talk about legacy fixes to Madden 20. Uh, from what you guys have seen out there, they're going to talk a little bit about some of the improvements coming to Madden 20. So stay tuned. What's up, everybody, and welcome back. We've got a special treat for you tonight. We got RG joining us. Farrell's here. Don't even call me man of the people when RG's in the building <laughs> because he is the true man of the people. Gameplay designer here at EA by day, broadcaster by night. He's got some special uh, stuff he wants to break down with us and really kind of go into some of the details of what's happening in Madden 20 for the hardcore player out there. So welcome. Well, thanks, Falls, and you know, don't sell yourself short, dude. You're, you're the legend yourself over here, man. You can't. All good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, you're the man. You're the man. Let's relax it up, man. We got Madden 20. We just had A-Dub crush it. It's like going on after like a legendary How, how unbelievable is A-Dub? And like real quick before we even get into it, I just got to say he's just like so phenomenal. I'm surprised like an NFL team hasn't just stolen from us yet. And the work he did with RPOs and shout out to Sid who worked on that. It was probably fixing bugs back there. I mean, those guys are just... Uh, really special people and just awesome to work with. So yeah, it's, it's we always, like when we do these streams, the goal is to to introduce you to this talent that we have here at the studio. And one of the big things when you come to like a game changer event is there's always a session where A Dub <laughs> draws on a whiteboard for over three hours, and you learn just so much. And so like that is a little bit of what we wanted to give to you. And I think you got to start to see that, and we'll continue to go more in depth with that. But that's kind of the experience we're going for on these streams. So for sure, shout out to everyone for coming out and supporting. Um, the real nitty-gritty detail. There was a, a good chunk of meat in part one. Obviously, the part two blog will be coming out right now. Uh, we just previewed some of those 200 plays. We gave you some samples. But for the hardcore player out there, what are some of the things that were the meta this year or uh, you know, that you're really working on and focusing with your team? 
Yeah, no, there's a ton of stuff I'm excited uh, to share. We'll, we'll get through it. Uh, a lot of the stuff is uh, we play the game as mu much as our users do. Uh, we, we play a lot. A lot of people in the office play. So uh, each year we're able to identify, you know, uh, some of those pain points or some of the areas where it's we obviously know we can improve there and uh, make things more fun, more realistic. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, if you want, we could just go right in. Yeah. I, I'm lucky. I, you guys just let me kind of go off like, you know. Give me Clint those and, sheets. Let me see those. Yeah. Glenn and Adub got like a whole structure of things. Oh. You guys are like, hey, just list the stuff that you kind of like. Um, so the first thing for me is um, kind of locomotion improvements. And what that really is, is just like movement in general. If last year was the real player motion year, this year is definitely like real player motion uh, 2.0. And what I mean by that is um, when you're playing a game, like what's the most important thing? It's moving your guy with the left stick. Like any video game, whether it's Madden, anything, control responsiveness is super important. And uh, this year more than ever, I feel like my ball carrier uh, we just did a really good job of making them feel that responsive. Like when you see a hole open up, uh, you're actually able to hit that hole, and it, it feels um, amazing. So just uh, just starting with the basics, just pure movement, by far one of my favorite things. That's on the offense and defensive side of the ball. Uh, the QA guys love uh, how pursuit feels, how lurking around feels, uh, responsiveness wise, and uh, yeah, just the ball carrier. You're just really able to make. Big plays with them. Probably the first thing you, when you pick up the game, it's the most noticeable piece is like the left stick running feels better. I've asked a lot of people in the studio, I'm like, hey, thing. how come? And they just said it's it's kind of 2.0, it's kind of the evolution of it. And it, it so much, in, so enjoyable to have that left stick to, to see where you want to go and be able to get there and really feel good. Uh, it's definitely the first thing I noticed when I played. So, not for Shout sure. Out. So, we, ha we had to call that out. Um, a couple other things that are like in that area that I also really like are um, ball carrier moves. For example, like I don't know about you guys, but stiff arm for a long time just didn't feel like a great move for me. That was one of those things when we play the game, we realized like, wow, there really is room for improvement here. So um, stiff arm especially feels a lot better for the ball carrier, especially like in this situation. You know, like you know, before if you were head on, I could kind of stiff arm you, but when a guy was to your side. It was kind of hard, but that's yes. like one of the best times you want to stiff arm. Yeah, those back Yeah, long like if run, I need like, to get you out of here. So um, now, like, if a guy's coming from your side or he's behind you, you can actually match a really nice animation, keep him at bay. R really cool stuff. So there. the only thing, when you're turning, you're getting nice and animated, your microphone's staying here, so we're losing you a little bit I'm of audio. So, that's sorry, the, hey, guys. no, that's, hey, it's the passion. You've, you've, you've been at the caster desk with me, dude. Because, you, you know how we get. He leans in. He leans right in. <laughs> they have better technology than we do here in the hallway, but, you know, it's all good. We do our all best. Right, I'll try to stay still. Um, also with the ball carrier, um, fake out seem better tuned, especially for the user. Uh, we, we know people gave us the feedback. It, it's okay when you fake out my AI defender, but when you fake out my user defender, I get pulled into some sort of animation. Uh, not a great feeling. So uh, the users rarely ever get faked out. And another thing um, with spin and jukes, which to me are your fake out, uh, fake out mechanics. Um, one thing we did is we kept those as fake out mechanics. So you won't get as many of those broken tackles. That kind of felt fluky with those. Like if I spun into you, and spun into the tackle and then all of a sudden broke it. It's like, wait a minute, you weren't trying to break that tackle. You were trying to spin to get away from me. So um, we tuned that. That, that, that's to me like really phenomenal. It really helped balance uh, juke and spin uh, and also give the defensive user, um, you know, just the viable options he needs to counter it. Um, we got a little settings menu. We went in, I think we may have a look at that. Um, that might be something that could lead us into more conversations about some of the things that we've that have been changed around or different or not different. So uh, let us it, know the, that. So the main thing here that you want to look at, and it, to anyone that really played, I'm sure you'll be happy about this. We removed the auto strafe um, functionality. Um, we we just it's off now by default. Um, we got a lot of feedback from a lot of different cohorts that just said this mechanic is pretty much useless. It's a pain point. And uh, we just didn't even want to give anybody the option to hurt themselves with auto strafe anymore. So we removed it. The other big thing that we did um, within the settings was we default ball hawk to on now, no matter what. Uh, last year, if you went to all Madden, you could find, go into situations where ball hawk would default to off. And if we're being honest, the way that this game is built and designed and the way that we to get your best experience is when ball hawk's on. It's going to give you the best chance of defense. So we didn't want to... Um, turn that off for people without them really knowing. Now, if you want to turn that off, you have that option, but you're blatantly going to have to be the one to do that. I recommend if you play the game that you play with Ballhawk on. 
Um, but yeah, we just, it's a small change, but I think it will help a lot of people because I know I would catch myself having to go in the settings menu and say, is my ball hawk off? Like what, what's going on when something didn't go my way? So uh, we kind of eliminated that. That is awesome. That is awesome. We got a, a little bit more on the list here. We talked a little bit about the shed defense, or we haven't quite hit on that yet, but uh, conservative tackle tuning, things like that. What else you got uh, for the fans out there? Uh, there's a ton of them. Uh, like I said, I just I don't have like a huge robust feature set like these guys. Just some of my favorite improvements. Um, strip ball. That's another one. One of my least favorite things about last year that we got a lot of feedback on was how easy it was to just spam strip ball. If I was behind you, I could just keep hitting RB until I matched one of those animations. And a lot of people didn't like that. It didn't feel very skillful for a mechanic that was so impactful. Uh, so we found the bugs there. So now strip ball is very responsive. If you mistime it and you're not in the window, you're going to play one of those with animation. So it just adds uh, additional risk to that mechanic, which um, we felt was much needed. And everyone who's played with it, uh, we really like that change so far. Um, so, oh, another big one. So you all know like when you used to get an interception and then you stumble after the interception. Like you have the pick six, but for whatever reason you trip over your own feet and it's really frustrating. Like we've all been there. Especially because I don't get that many interceptions. So like <laughs> when I do get them, I, I can't score in the red zone either, so I need to capitalize. So, so um, we, we definitely just more work with our stumble logic and uh, it's just so much more improved about seeing your ball carrier kind of trip when they shouldn't be. It takes a lot more force to get them into that state now. So intercepting just naturally feels so much smoother um, with that change. You'll see it in other places, but interceptions is the main place that we're um, really feeling. One other thing, how about anything with, with aggressive, conservative tuning, uh, adjustments, anything in that area of the game that you guys touched on or, or would add anything to? Say it again? Uh, anything about like aggressive uh, coaching adjustments? Yeah. Okay, so for the coaching adjustments, um, we have some stuff we're working on. One thing that we've definitely done is we removed um, the pass rush coaching adjustment. Um, it's, I believe, accounted for now and enough abilities and there's enough good ways to get pass rush. Um, without that, it caused us a lot of problems throughout the year, uh, tuning wise, balance. Um, when we talked to a lot of our game changers, and people who played, they just felt the game would be more balanced without it. We could spend our dev resources elsewhere. So um, that one is gone. And then we have a few other tricks up our sleeves for that menu, but I don't, nothing that I think I can share hey. right now. Well, we'll have this platform uh, going forward. Obviously, the goal here on this show is to tell you more about the game, Madden 20. And, of course, at EA Play, we will show you even more. We do have a little something to show you down here. I can't oh, read it, but man. I think you know exactly what it is. That so is, why don't you tell us a little bit more about these wide receiver hot routes here in Madden 20. That is super dope. So what you're seeing right now is um, we did a lot of work to some of our legacy abilities. And one of those abilities in Mutt, for those that aren't um, familiar with them, some of them were route chems. And what those route chems did last year was they pretty much just changed uh, some of your hot routes by default. So how you had the eight default hot routes that you see on the left, we would just change some of those. Um, this year, now with the route chems, instead of taking away routes from you, uh, we give you an additional four. So what you're seeing right here is uh, this would be a wide receiver who has um, a slot receiver route chem. So what that, what that means is when he aligns in the slot receiver position, he's going to get those four additional hot routes that you see on the right that are on the D-pad, which is the crossing route, the post route, the corner, and the stop and go. And the cool thing about that is that's just the hot routes if you had a slot receiver. You could have an ability that says, hey, if you're an outride, outside specialist receiver, then when you're on the outside, you get four additional uh, routes. You can combo them where sometimes it's a guy that, uh, you know, no matter where he aligns at the receiver position, he gets four additional ones. You'll have certain uh, receiving backs that get additional hot routes when they're in the backfield, tight ends that get it when they're in the tight end position. And then the ultimate route cam that I'm most excited about is for our park, pocket passer, field general type of guys. Um, they'll be able to get an ability, which no matter who they're hot routing, they'll have the four additional hot route options. So this just gives you um, a great way to get creative, um, way more strategy at the line of scrimmage. A-Dub already does a lot of work with playbooks, but um, this was the type of thing that we felt would really help um, separate how efficient certain players are when it comes to strategy and just strictly scheming with them, not just what they do on the field. So that's one of my favorite abilities by far. That's sweet. That's sweet. That's, that's sweet. super dope, right? You, you look at your list and consider anything else you want to add. I got Twitter guy over here. He's in the chat right now. They're breaking down some questions. Anything that came up, I know tomorrow on Gridiron Notes, we'll actually break down your exact questions that you have. 
Uh, one of those things will be the blocking on RPOs, kind of how that works. I know Adub talked to it a little bit, but uh, that's been the main question is blocking in relation to RPOs. We'll cover that on the Gridiron Notes blog tomorrow. Uh, that's a blog where we go in, break down your topics, anything we missed, we'll cover it there. We'll put highlights to the stream and kind of do all that. Um, right now as well, there's a blog that's gone live or is about to go live, Gameplay Part 2. Should be coming pretty soon uh, here, and uh, you'll want to check that out. It's live. It's out there. People go in and get it. Agent K, what do you got for me? The scoreboard. <laughs> is it live? People, people want to know about the scoreboard. They want to know if, uh, if it got an update, an overhaul. So tune in at EA Play to find out about that scoreboard. A little tease. Maybe we'll tell you the night before to remind you to, uh, to tune in. But don't worry out there. That is probably the number one question I see on Twitter is, did the scoreboard <laughs> yeah, get, a, get an update? Lot. People love it. And uh, you know, we'll have to see. That's called a tease in the biz. Uh, we'll have to see what we can do. Anything else you want to add um, uh, that uh, you feel like we, we didn't get to? I don't want to take too much of your time. We'll try to we get have all the time in the world. Quickly. Um, another thing is uh, shed defenses. We hear a lot from people. It's uh, those nickel 335 formations, those big nickel formations where you can have uh, defenders, pass rushers that weren't really that great, and they can get those kind of pre canned animations that really get downfield at the quarterback. They would disengage at the end of them, and they would just cause all kind of havoc, probably more havoc than they should be causing for the quality of pass rusher that players were putting out there. Um, we've done a lot of work to just improve those interactions. When the guys get a loss animation, um, instead of disengaging and getting at the quarterback, they'll stay engaged with the blocker. Um, you won't have as good of a chance to even trigger those animations if you're not an elite style type of pass rusher. So just uh, some really good things put in place to help us control those styles of defenses and really um, balance that area. Another big thing in that space falls is um, we noticed last year a lot of people with the Lamar Jacksons and the Mike Vicks running backwards super far, chucking passes that uh, a piece of my soul would just you know go away every time I saw one of those videos. So um, this year there's just been some really good changes that when you run back a certain amount of yards, your pass icons will disappear, making it much harder for you to throw, and there's an additional inaccuracy penalty once you start running backwards to make throws like that. Um, it, it really helps solve that area of the game, which I, you know I, I feel like got pretty unbalanced yeah. toward and the I end of the Yeah, and I think we there was some changes to QB contains as well, which we can add to the gridiron notes unless you want to add anything on that, but um, that is another big thing. So the three biggest things when I play, number one, left stick movement, huge. Number two, elite pass rushers, really dominating games. And I think that plays to the stars feel like stars. And then number three, um, ah, the lurking's big. The one the Clint talked about yes. where the linebackers not being able to just, you know, jump up and make these super plays anymore. And, uh, you know, with pass trajectory, you actually have to get your defender in a realistic position. Uh, to make some of those plays on the ball. I mean, I re I, nobody respects stick work more than me. I want people to be able to show their stick work off and make plays. It just got to a point where it was just blatantly too easy. Um, so now you're, you're going to have to work for those interceptions, and I think that's a good thing. It's, it's yeah. really going to open up the game uh, for a lot of people and make people work um, the way we want them to. Yeah, you got to get into good habits, man. I was dropping too far back pass. I was ended up I would throw an inaccurate pass, i get mad at the game, and then i go, they'd go, you were 20 yards behind the line of scrimmage. You're not going to have an accurate pass from there. Why would you roll back that way? And it's just the left, your left thumb takes over, and you've got to make happens. sure you're having good habits uh, in the game. So thank you very much for coming out here, man. Thanks you got anything me. else we want to add in? Uh, no, th thank you for all you guys do. Thank you to the community for uh, you know, tuning in, for supporting us. Um, you know, really excited about Madden 20. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Uh, share your feedback with us, but I think it's going to be a really good year. Um, this is some of the biggest strides I've ever seen Madden take, and, you know, Madden's been a part of my life for, you know, going on longer than I want to share now, yeah. so I'm really excited about it. All right, that is it for the gameplay stream. We do have a couple housekeeping notes we'll have to get to. You'll have to sit and bear it through these, but it's we'll try good. and make it fun. So I know uh, giveaway Gabby's got Nightbot up in the back because we want to give away some kahunas uh, that we gave away earlier today. We're also going to extend the opportunity on Twitter. So if you go right now and send a positive message to RG underscore Madden, positive messages only, tell them <laughs> something you learned, tell them something you're excited about. We'll extend that as well to A Dub, a -dub uh, his Twitter's A White73. You can find it out there. And then, of course, Clint Oldenburg. We'll give away one kahuna to folks that go send positive messages to those folks. These guys share their time. It's late here. A lot of folks still working, but uh, they're, they're hanging out. They don't have to do this. They do it because they want to give you that information. So we want to reward. Uh, them with some positivity uh, as we go out here.
We're going to roll a kahuna here from uh, Giveaway Gabby for the Twitch chat. We'll do three of those real quick. And um, the Madden Minute here, just to recap, we talked a little bit earlier about the three new types of RPOs in Madden 20, the peaks, the reads, the alerts. We also talked about one new trick play here in the Philly Special, and then we also showed you those new Rams jet sweep handoffs. You had the two different types. You have the shotgun types and the under center types. As a Patriots fan who sits next to A-Dub, do you know how gross it is to turn around one day and see him ha like building Philly Special like <laughs> right on the screen behind you? It's just like, oh, it's, like, it it's needs rough. to happen. Hold that LRG. We also showed you some of those, you know, pitches and tosses and the ability to kind of build oh, plays. On the screen. Over 200 new RPOs. Mm -hmm. So over 200 new RPOs uh, coming to Madden this year. I know we just showed you a little sample right there, but don't be fooled. There's a lot. And, of course, there will be live service offensive playbook uh, updates and defensive playbook updates after the year rolls out more than before uh, as they started in Madden 19, Madden 20, really looking to take that to the next level. So that is the recap of the stream. Go read that blog. We got the giveaways coming in here shortly. I know you've all gone over to Twitter and started to get those positive messages out to Clint, to RG, to A Dub. Put Gabby on the spot. But you know what? That's how we roll. We rolling it? All right. First winner in the Twitch chat tonight for a Kahuna. Rafer Alston. Yes. Rafer Alston. Yes. Rafer Alston. Very creative. Yes. <laughs> We've Very got uh, a great ball player. Great player. He's a winner. I would like to uh, remind you tomorrow, it's uh, Fan Appreciation in Madden Ultimate Team. So that's a new promo coming to Madden Ultimate Team tomorrow. We've got Fan Appreciation. Tune in to Madden Daily Drops tomorrow at 1030, and we'll actually give you all the details on that one. That was our first winner. We're going to go ahead and roll two more winners here for a chance. No, no small giveaways, only Kahunas only. That'll be six Kahunas. The Kahunas, they're getting, like, vintage content here, yeah. right? Oh, like, yeah, absolutely. We're blessing them. Barry like, Sanders, got... at least 13 the good stuff. items of right. 99 rated. Mute is cool. Mute That's is my cool. guy, dude. Arturo Mute. Solano? Huh? Why? The government name. Mute is cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's Mute phenomenal. is cool. Chargers Club Series? Or uh, Niners, I believe Niners Club Championship? Mute, Mute's my guy, man. I'm happy for you, Mute. I like Mute. I like Mute. Good dude. Good dude. That was, a, that was a funny coincidence. We got one more flying in. Mr. Andreola. I'm happy for you. I don't know him like Mute is cool, but I'm happy Jim for Stevens? you. Jim Stevens? <laughs> Not Jim Stevens. They, the chat dislikes when I know the winners. They, they don't love but, it because they feel like it's... You might think the fix is in. Yeah, Point yeah. shaving, yeah, you got to be you know, careful. Gibbs is the fixed guy. I'm the, I'm, I'm the natural guy. You got, all integrity. That's how we do it. All yeah. integrity with Falls. Roll one more, Gabby. Roll, again, yeah, Roll one more. Bless him, mate. Go, Gab. Remember, fan appreciation tomorrow inside Madden Ultimate Team. Shuckas 28. You go, Shuckas. Shuckas 28. Winner. You go, Winner. Now. All right, you st so if you did not win in the Twitch chat tonight, we obviously have those three opportunities on Twitter, to RG, to Adub, to Clint. Uh, that is all here for the gameplay stream. We appreciate you coming out. We got to hit you with the survey, though, in the chat. Survey link's coming out. This is very important. Remember, if we get 1,000 responses on a single survey this season, S. Gibbs will shave his head. That is what we need so that we can keep our jobs here. We need a lot of survey responses, plus we need S. Gibbs to shave his head. At a thousand responses, we only got to like five hundred last time. So this is like known for his lettuce too. I can't believe he's putting up the lettuce. That's he needs this. His, he needs it. Boss to say, hey, what's crazy. the survey say? He needs to, he needs to get out there. So he's willing to put it all on the line. He's got some skin in the game here. Got some hair in the game, as they say. All right, Twitter guy. Anything else that they're saying out there? Twitter's taking over. All right, we're out of here. See you next time. Shout out to RG. Thank you for coming out, sharing those deets. We'll talk soon. Skips, put that graphic up.